Hi friends, I'm Sarah and welcome to my channel, The Rocking Chair Stitcher. Um, it is Wednesday, June 26th, and this is floss tube number 14. I think that's the first time that I've had all of those details all together at once, so that's a good start. <laughs> um, it is currently sunny outside. It's been gray and rainy and um, not cold, but just a little more um, not summer hot the last couple of days, so it's nice to see the sun again. Um, my son just went down for a nap, so we'll see how long I get here. I have several things I want to show you guys, um, and I'm excited to show them. A uh, little life update. We're still in Nova Scotia. Our house has not sold. We've had a handful of showings since last time, um, and some people leave reviews like with their realtor to pass on to our realtor, and they like the house, they rate it highly, think the price is right, all those things. Um, but they find something else while they're searching and don't pick our house. So it has been um, like three-ish weeks, I think, since my last floss tube and June has been so sweet. <laughs> um, I can joyfully report that my heart is peaceful, which is saying a lot because the spring was heavy and a lot of weight and a lot of stress and anxiety and a lot of things going on there and just the last couple of weeks have been so peaceful and sweet. Hard things still happen and are still going on but um, I'm learning a lot about just enjoying today um, and I'm not gonna cry <laughs> um, but we were just spending a lot of days out at the um, little kiddie pool in our yard and I lounge in the chair and, and stitch fill in mostly so I can be real present with my son and he plays in the water table in the kiddie pool with like literally an inch of water, but it's, it's his level right now and he's loving it. Um, yeah, so it's been sweet. Josh is off next week, um, for a whole week. So we talked about going on a trip, maybe to Cape Breton or elsewhere, but there's been a lot of stuff going on in our life and we've traveled a lot, although not for vacation so much, but we are ready just to stay at home and do a little staycation. So next week we're going to do a staycation. Um, we're going to go to this farm slash history place that Josh has always wanted to go to. We just never made time for it. I think we're going to spend an afternoon at the splash pad that just opened in our town. Uh, we're going to have a Canada Day slash 4th of July celebration if I can get my ducks in a row. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited for that. We used to do this before um, the days of COVID. And because I'm from the U.S. and Josh is Canadian and uh, Canada Day is July 1st and then Independence Day for the U.S. is July 4th. So that was one of my favorite, if not favorite holiday growing up because it's so chill and you get outside and you eat yummy food and you spend time with people you care about and um, fireworks and sometimes parades and all that stuff. So one of my favorite holidays and uh, I have never made it back for the 4th of July to the U.S. since immigrating to Canada. So I've been here, I think 11 years this year. So eventually I'd like to get back, ooh, the wind's blowing my notes. Eventually I'd like to get back across the border to see um, a parade or a 4th of July fireworks, that kind of thing. But that's not the case this year. So we're gonna have our own little bash and uh, it just makes it special and a way to still celebrate the fact that I'm Canadian, but also American. Um, so all that to be said, that's I think our summer, Currently, Justin's going to sign up for, or not going to sign up, he's going to be doing swim lessons, one-to-one um, -one swim lessons starting in July. It's hard to think he's old enough to be doing that, but he'll be four this fall. So that'll be interesting. Uh, it was a really good intake form where I could give all kinds of information about Justin, and they really seem to care about, you know, how it's going to work best for him. So we'll see how that goes. He loves the water currently, so hopefully he still loves it. And it'll just be basics and safety um, and blowing bubbles in the water and that kind of thing, I think, to start. So that is our summer right now. We're just kind of chilling and I've gotten a lot of stitching done. Um, I'm embracing minimal meals, like simple ingredients and just not getting out a ton of stuff in our house so that way things are tiny and easy to just quickly get ready for a showing. And with that comes a lot of time spent outside with Justin playing outside and he's occupying himself and I get to stitch a fair bit. Um, although there are days that I get in the pool with him. <laughs> so my book of days is actually getting some action, which is kind of fun. And I'm enjoying doing that. I have not managed to put it, I don't think a sticker in this whole book. I don't have a ton of stickers, but the ones I have, I think, um, 
not stitching related at all for sure, but I just haven't managed to put any stickers in here. So I'm just using it as tracking things because it also helps me get ready for a floss tube, but I just really enjoy seeing what I've worked on. Um, and it reminds me I have whips I haven't looked at in a bit. And uh, so eventually maybe I'll sticker, maybe next year I'll sticker, but this year not happen, <laughs> or at least not this month. But all that to say, let's get started. I wanna show you my stitching stuff. Uh, I don't know how much storage I have on my phone, so let's see if we can get all this in one shot. So I finished a pattern and it is finished for now in my words. I'm waiting till we move to um, frame it because I wanna actually take it to a framer, but I don't want it to get sent to a framer like be at a, be sent away by a framer and then it come back here if we've already moved. So, um, I'm waiting, but I fin finished, ah, the wind is blowing. Feels so nice though, so can't complain. Okay, so I finished Consider the Birds, which I showed you last time. I currently just have it very loosely pinned on the back on some sticky board, but not adhered to the sticky board because I wanted to get some finished shots so I could list the pattern. Um, and we have this sitting on our dresser in our bedroom. So it's a really sweet reminder. Um, so I really, really enjoyed, I think the sun's making it a little bit faded there. Really, really enjoyed stitching this. Um, really enjoyed stitching the font and you'll see this font again because I really enjoyed making it and also stitching with it. So I think I'll be, um, using this font and other stitches in the future, but really happy with it. I have not decided what color frame I'm going to go with. Um, probably something maybe antique gold, but I'm not sure. I don't know if that will clash with the orange, so we'll have to wait and see. But I've left a ton of fabric that um, there can be an edge around it and everything. I just made it smaller um, for now to sit on here, but really happy with it. The pattern is live in my Etsy shop and someone commented a couple of videos back um, and said the most practical thing in the world that I don't know if I've said once. My Etsy shop is not named the rocking chair stitcher. So I used to sell vintage things that I had thrifted um, and like curated. And um, when I got into cross stitch, I kind of shifted away from that, but I still have the same Etsy shop. I didn't see the point in switching to a whole new name and all of that. Um, so a local name around here is Sisabu, um, for roads and the river and Sisabu Falls and all of that. And there's like a coffee roaster. Anyway, there's a whole story behind it. It's kind of a legend. I don't know if it's accurate or not, but my shop is called a little Sisabu shop because of that. So I've left it the same name. So if you want to find me on Etsy, that's what you would look for is a little Sisabu shop. I'll also start putting it down in the, oh man, there's that itchy nose. I'll start putting it down in the description of my videos as best I can remember. Um, thank you for everyone who has already supported my shop and uh, Consider the Birds pattern is up in there now. So if you want to join stitching it, I know a couple other people are stitching it. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed doing that one. So that was really satisfying. And then ooh, this one, I did not press anything. I thought about it, but it didn't happen. So um, this one, I'm super tickled. This is a um, new start this month, but also a finish. I've not framed it, but I think I may have found a frame for it. I forgot to bring it to the table. I went yard selling on Saturday. I had the day to myself. I know what, all over the place. I hit a couple of yard sales. The museum was having a yard sale. The church was having a yard sale. Um, and then I think I hit two more at other houses, but I didn't get anything from those. And uh, had lunch out by myself, like, and then I got my groceries and stuff, but it was really sweet. Anyway, I think I found a frame for it, but I'll show it to you next time if it works. But this is, put my book of days behind it here. This is Pride and Prejudice by Stitchrovia. I saw Sarah um, from Somi Sarah stitching this, and I was like, oh, I have to stitch that. And it really stitched up fast. I don't think I used the called for colors. I think... My green might be different and maybe my pinks, the blue. Actually, I don't know if any of it is the same except for maybe the brownish green that the Pride and Prejudice stamp is. It was so much fun to stitch and I will be looking more at their patterns because I think they do more in this kind of font. Um, I've mentioned it once or twice before. My plan is to eventually have a wall of book quotes and movie quotes and TV show quotes that are like our favorite, but in cool stitches. And uh, 
so this is the first one. <laughs> so I absolutely love it. I think it's so pretty how they did the font. I love how the flowers kind of come up through. When I think of someone being bewitched, I almost think of them like a, a spell cast on them. Like they're just kind of entwined and they can't do without or they can't get out. They have no control. Um, and uh, so the idea of like the vines kind of coming up through it was like when I think of like fairy tales, the vines oftentimes are like something that a evil wizard will send to like wrap around someone. I'm really getting nerdy on you guys here. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. But I just, when I stitched it, I just loved it. And it's romantic and it's, yeah, I just love everything about it. I'm going to stitch this again um, for a Christmas gift. I don't think uh, my sister sees my floss tube. So it's for my sister for Christmas. We used to watch um, Pride and Prejudice. Um, not weekly, but pretty close. Um, on Friday nights or Saturday nights. So anyway, really enjoyed stitching that. Thanks for the recommendation, Sarah. I will be stitching that one again. Um, what do I have next? I kind of just made my piles today. <laughs> My goodness, my nose is itchy. Um, okay, so I have another new start. I talked about this in haul last time. Excuse me. In haul last time because I have a new um, niece coming. And um, I'm just going to cover up the bottom of this because it has some of the pattern information. I don't think I'm supposed to show. Maybe the top too. And just print it off the image off of the cover. So this is called, it's by Historical Sampler Company, but it's called Flower Birth Sampler. Look at these coming in handy here. So it is gorgeous and it has a lot of confetti and it is the most satisfying thing I've stitched in quite a while besides the Pride and Prejudice stitch because each, I get what people are talking about like on Quakers like how each section, each motif is so satisfying. And I don't think this qualifies as a Quaker, um, but um, it is really satisfying. So I will show you my progress. All of this happened in, I think, a morning. No, I stitched one or two motifs in a morning when he was napping or something. And then one evening when it first came. Um, so I am stitching this on a 16 count, just looking here at the rest of the fabric, 16 count ivory Ada from one, two, three stitch. So this is the rest of it, um, which I actually somehow managed to purchase two of, <laughs> and I don't think I had an intention for buying two for that I can remember, but I absolutely love it. It is so satisfying to stitch. It's so cute. And I think it's going to make the perfect little baby girl sampler. And I honestly kind of want to stitch like some more bluey colors in there instead of the pinks to make it for Justin maybe too. I have one that I showed you months ago that I got for Justin. I just don't know what I think of it. It's cute, but I just don't know if it fits. So I haven't decided yet, but I think this might be too floral for my style for his room. And... You know, that whole like idea of not like making everything for your child match your style as much because his room's blue. Like nothing else in my house is, is painted like blue other than my cupboards. Um, it's like a baby blue, but it's like, it's okay if you have bright, colorful things that don't all match your beige house. <laughs> so this would be a more aesthetic from his room, but the one with the bear and the mountains and that kind of thing is probably more kid like boyish whatever anyway probably too far into my head over analyzing this one um but for my niece i'm really excited to be stitching this one so i've still got a couple of months um so yeah that one's really pretty and if you're looking for kind of a more elegant traditional looking not traditional looking but more cottage core i don't know looking birth sampler i would highly recommend this one historical sampler company so yeah, so that is my first new start slash, I think at this point I would call it a whip. Um, I never know in my starts versus whips pile. At what point when I've started something in between floss tubes, 
but I get a lot done on it. At what point is it really a start anymore or has it moved into the whips pile? But I'm like, if I haven't showed it to you as a whip or a start before, I think it qualifies as a start. So this is my floss tube, so that's what we're gonna call it. It's a start, turning into the whip now. Anyway, I was watching mm, XO someone. Cannot remember, I'm so sorry. If you see this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I was watching her floss tube uh, she did her first floss tube a couple weeks ago and now she did a second one. I was just watching the other day, but I didn't get to finish yet. Um, she did it with her friend, Hello from Liz Matthews, which um, I know she's a very well-known pattern designer. And uh, she was talking about, I think it's called the hashtag on Instagram, maybe is Hello Dimension Sal, something like that. But she showed this pattern and I fell in love. And although I am regularly um, and able to add things to my wish list, I'm usually really good about not purchasing them right away and waiting a long time and kind of like, do I still love this a month later? Or do I still really want this? Do I want to actually stitch this and hang it on my wall or gift it? Um, but when I saw this, no. I think the same day I went and ordered it. Um... <laughs> It's so cute. And there's another one that's a toy store. Now, I will say it is probably the most confetti heavy stitch I have worked on so far. Um, I have frogged four times, five times, multiple parts. Um, so there's that. But it doesn't look like a whole lot of anything yet. Now, what I will say, like this is, I believe, eight and a half by 11 size, the book of days page, right? So look how small it is. I was shocked by how little it was. I don't know why. Um, I didn't pay attention to that, I guess. But it actually makes it feel more manageable because even though this is super confetti heavy um, and I've had to frog so much and there's a lot of counting and yeah, um, it feels attainable because I am seeing enough progress and I know it's not huge. Oh, I hear somebody supposed to be going down we'll see how long that lasts um yeah so not a ton of progress but that's the start um super beautiful um uh kit and it came with all the floss and everything in it and I hear my son so I'm gonna pause this video and hopefully I'll get to come back and finish filming <laughs> 